Hello and welcome to my Sophie Lark taste test vlog. So Sophie Lark has pretty much blown up in the last year on TikTok and various social medias. She is an indie author best known for her mafia romances and everyone seems to be obsessed with her book. So I'm like, I need to dedicate a whole vlog to reading her. So at the moment she has four series that are out. The Underworld series, which is Mafia, the Brutal Birthright series, which is also Mafia, the Kingmaker series, which is like Mafia Academy, and all three of these series are connected. And then she also has the Sinners duet, which is a serial killer romance. So I wanted to try books from each series and go from there. However, for Kingmakers, you need to have read Br Brutal Birthright and Underworld first. So I'm a little bit confused on the reading order. Um, and in my TBR, I said I was going to read Yvonne and Snow, which are Underworld, Brutal Prince, which is the first Brutal Birthright, and then the Sinners Duet. However, Madison informed me that the ideal, and Madison is my Sophie Lark consultant, so technically it is recommended to do the Brutal Birthright series under Kingmakers 1 and 2, Underworld 1 and 4, and Kingmakers 3 and 4. So what am I going to do with this information? I think I will save Snow and instead read two in the Brutal Birthright series. So I'm just going to switch those around. However, I did already start Yvonne. All of these like random reading order for this vlog and then go out and finish the rest of my January TBR, which I don't have much, like I've actually read a decent amount. Let me go get my journal. Okay, so first of all, I have Sophie Lark's backlist written out in this journal spread here. And she has a new series coming soon, which is always fun. And then for my January TBR, which is exactly what I put in my video, pretty sure. So I have, let's see if you can see this. Yvonne, Snow, Brutal Prince, There Are No Saints, There Is No Devil, so I'll just um, replace Snow with the second Brutal Birthright book. But then also what I have in my TBR for this month is Barbarians Taming by Ruby Dixon, Aftershocks by Ruby Dixon, which is a novella, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, and Electric Idol. So it amazes me. It amazes me how fast I read romances. I read them so fast. I always used to be like, how do people read 300 books in a year? And it's because they're mostly romance and they just read so fast. So the only big like fantasy book I have on my TBR this month is Daughter of the Moon Goddess and that's the only one that will probably take me multiple days to read because I read romances so fast. So I'm going to do these things for my vlog here and then after that probably go into a reading vlog. But I enjoy this setup because even though this seems like a long TBR, <clears throat> it's nice because at the end of the month that I can kind of just go off TBR and like mood read with whatever I want. Okay, so, and today is January 9th, by the way. So, those are my plans. So, with that being said, I am currently at 54% of Yvonne. Let's go to the cover. Here he is. This is Yvonne. He is the head of the Petrov Bratva in St. Petersburg, Russia. And we have Sloan, who is an assassin that was hired to kill him. And he's the only target that she hasn't ever killed and they just become like infatuated with each other it's a captor captive mafia romance it's pretty dark um but i love it and like it's just so like it's so spicy it's so good like the chemistry is there it's amazing and like i just feel like there's gonna be so many twists and turns uh sophie's writing is really really easy to get into so i definitely um i read like half of this book like very quickly last night so i'm about to go food shopping right now because like adult annoying things and then i'm gonna finish yvonne and start brutal prince and then see where life takes me from there oh also i got these press on nails and press on is the way to go um they're like the kiss self-adhesive nails but the self-adhesive isn't enough you need the glue as well but so far they've been lasting really good um i've had to do like a few touch-ups of nails that i felt like were falling off just because i didn't glue them down initially super well so i definitely think i'll learn over time but i just like i've always wanted to have nice nails consistently but like the patience that it requires to like go to the nail salon and like get your nails done and i like getting a pedicure much more than a manicure because i can sit there and read 
but with manicure I just like sit there so I'm like it's not my favorite thing and acrylics are really expensive and I'm trying to cut down on expenses so I decided to give press on to try and so far I'm really loving it this is the exact length that I want not too long but longer than my natural nail and they're really like sturdy so I can like tap on things so I'm very impressed with them and also like they just come in a lot of like really cool designs which is another thing that I wanted to be able to do is to have really cool artsy fun nails so that's it for the beginning of this vlog and let's see how things go from here okay so it's later in the same day and I finished Yvonne and I loved it I gave it five stars on Goodreads but I think it's more of a 4.5 just because I felt like there could have been a little bit more character development in the beginning of the novel in terms of them um coming together I felt like that part was maybe a little bit fast but besides that it was just like a really fun fast-paced mafia romance set in Russia and I enjoyed learning about the Bratva and all of like the intense mafia action and now here we have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark and I've heard such good things about this one everyone loves it and it's set in Chicago between rival mafia families the Irish and the Italian mafia and we have Callum who is in the Irish mafia and Ada who's in the Italian mafia and I can't wait already it seems like her writing has improved from that first book and there's like a lot more action and characterization going on so so far we got that far and another thing that i want to point out is that there are official playlists so this playlist is only 40 something minutes long so it's like i feel like it really gives you like a taste of what the book is because it's not too long so i've been listening to this and it's just really like getting me in the mood for the book you know so i'm gonna continue reading it and see how far i get tonight okay i think this camera angle should work so hello it's now the next day and i just got back from work i am reading a brutal prince and last night i got up to let's see 42 percent so i got to the first steamy scene and it was literally steamy loved it um this is definitely very much enemies to lovers uh because like wow like they really are kind of trying to kill each other in the beginning to be honest so it's really good really gripping and i'm really excited to see kind of now that they're in the situation how their relationship develops and they go to love from being enemies because right now they're still kind of enemies um but I, like the first spicy scene was like i was like oh this is gonna be one of my favorite books <laughs> one of my favorite romance books because it's so good and Something that I like about Ada's character is she's kind of described as, I guess I would kind of call her like mid-size and um, Callum talks about like how he like really finds her body type like attractive even though she's not like super thin blah blah, blah. and like just as someone that like probably falls in the mid-size category I appreciated the sentiment um, and it kind of just made me realize like how important diversity is not that like Someone being mid-sized is like the most diverse thing ever, but it's something that I saw myself in and like made me and my feelings feel validated. So I know for people with much more marginalized identities, that diversity is like just so important to see your own experience reflected in a positive light. So that's just all that I was really thinking about with that, but we love to see it. And um, yeah, so it's really interesting. It's like they're mafia families in modern day Chicago, but like, they're not straight up mafia families like the underworld series where they're like the literal like bravo like these are just like old money families that have like these long-standing rivalries um and now they just and like the modern day mafia like own a bunch of properties and own like construction companies and like the callum our hero is like running for the alderman seat in congress so it's kind of less like straight up crime than the underworld series but really enjoying it so far and i feel like i'm just gonna binge the series like to be honest i feel like i'm gonna binge the series so i do have the sinners duet though which would be what i would start next and then i would go back and finish the brutal birthright series but i feel like it's gonna be a very sophie lark month and i'm excited about it that's what i'm in the mood to read is ma -ma -ma mafia romance hello there's like no natural light outside which is really sad it's like sunset 
but the lighting in my apartment isn't too bad right here, which is good for vlogging. So I got some book mail to say. Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is an adult fantasy about um, the Celestial Kingdom and the Daughter of the Moon Goddess who goes and tries to free her mother from the moon. And I've just heard it's like lyrical and magical and a really good beginner adult fantasy because it's not so super dense, but is more upgraded from YA. And I finished Brutal Prince last night and oh my God, I loved it. I loved Aiden and Callum's relationship. No. No remote. Okay, so I loved Ada and Callum's relationship. Like, she was just so, like, wild and carefree um, and just really, like, confident and did whatever she wanted. And Callum was, just, like, so icy and she melted his icy exterior. They really worked together as a couple. And I really felt like there was, um, as a pair, as a opposed to Yvonne, like just a little bit more character development that I was looking for, which you can tell this is just a later book by the author. So I really loved it. I thought it was just like a perfect mafia romance. There was enough blood and guts for me to make it dark, mafia-like, and the steamy scenes were really good. They were really good. I loved the chemistry between the characters. Like, it was just amazing. So I started Stolen Air, which is the second book, and this one is about Nessa... Griffin, who is the youngest in the Griffin clan, aka the Irish Mafia, and she's really sheltered. She's the baby of the family. She's protected. She's not involved in any of the Mafia business, um, and she's just like this very carefree, innocent, happy girl, and she is really into ballet dancing, and she is a college student. And then we have Miguelage, whose adopted father is the head of the Polish Mafia, um, and something happened with him in the last book, so now Mikolaj is seeking revenge. So it's Enemies to Lovers, a continuation of the overall mafia plotline from the first book. So I don't think that you could really read this as a, you know, like, one-offs. Like, each one is a complete story, but I would still read them in order for, like, the overarching plot. So I'm gonna read this one, and I just feel like I'm really into it. I feel like I can relate to the aspect of Nessa being, like, really happy-go-lucky and like cheerful because i feel like that's kind of like my personality um just from the descriptions alone i don't know if there's any of the heroines that i would like feel like oh that's my personality to a t but i feel like i can already see similarities between us and i'm just starting off we have a flashback to mikolaj in poland and how he came to america to chicago where this is set and we are learning a little bit more about nessa and her ballerina dancing so i'm really intrigued by this one um yeah so my plan is to finish this one and then i'm gonna start the sinners duet and then i will double back and see how many more i can read or i might like take a break read out the rest of my january tbr and then come back to literally reading only sophie lark so we'll see but i really really want to make it a priority to finish tbrs this year which means i'm going to set tbrs that i can finish this year i literally just feel like i need to go to bed but, um, okay, so I'm reading Stolen Air, and I'm, I forget what percent, I'm like a hundred or so pages in, so I think I'm maybe a quarter of the way in, but I had forgotten that this is an actual Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I'm very surprised by, like, how far it is leaning into Beauty and the Beast. Not that that's a bad thing, but I just was like, oh yeah, so I'm at 26%. Very surprised, because I didn't think it would lean this heavily into it, but I'm enjoying it, and... I'm so interested to see like how we're gonna get a redemption arc for our hero Miko because right now I literally am like dude you suck like how are you ever going to be redeemed even though I know I would probably love him by the end of the book but like right now I'm like mm, you have a lot of like explaining to do like I don't know I don't know how yeah also this book definitely has triggers for suicide and self-harm it opened on like a pretty gory scene and like that doesn't necessarily trigger me, but like I wasn't expecting it. So just like know that going into it. Um, I, although her next books that I'm reading, The Sinner's Duet, I know are like very dark. So I'm prepared for those. Um, but yeah, I'm just really enjoying this. And I was talking to Maddie about this and she yelled at me because I didn't text her the second that I finished Yvonne. And I'm like, I had to do chores after I finished the book. 
so now every time I reach a certain page mark, I text her. Whether that's me being like, I'm on page 15, now I'm on page 16, now I'm on page 17. If I would like to be annoying. <laughs> Anyways. But we were just talking about how Sophie, like, each of her books is very unique. And I found, like, this is the third book of hers that I'm reading now. And, like, each couple really is different in terms of like the way that their relationship develops and like maybe like the different kinks that they have in their spicy scenes so it's keeping it fresh and unique and i enjoy that and an author that can write several different types of romance as well is always a good thing so i'm having fun but i really need to go to bed also look at how long my eyelashes are it's because I've been using, oh, you can't really see, um, mascara primer, however. <laughs> the bad thing about that is, like, the mascara actually, like, gets all over your skin. That's why it looks like I have, like, a bruise or something. It's just mascara that is rubbed off throughout the day. So I, I need to get, like, a mascara setting powder or something. I don't even know if that exists, but uh, the lashes are just too beautiful to be contained. Exactly. Exactly. I'm tired. Don't my bookshelves look beautiful in the back? Sometimes I walk in my apartment and I'm like, I live here with these bookshelves. They are mine. I own them. And it's amazing. And here's Gavin. All tuckered in. Hi, baby. You're so cute. He doesn't want to be on camera right now. Okay, bye. Hello, so quick update. I finished Stolen Air. Loved it. I'm addicted to the Brutal Birthright series. And once I finish um, the Sinner's Duet and some other books on my January TBR, I'm definitely going to go back and finish those up because... I'm addicted. It's just like the perfect mafia series. Soul and Air was so good. I loved Mikolaj and Nessa's story. And like, I did not think that Miko could be redeemed. And somehow in the end, I still loved him. So that is the power of Sophie Lark. Um, and definitely the whole Beauty and the Beast aspect was done really well. It really heavily leaned into the like story, but I enjoyed that. I thought it was really well done. Like if you're gonna do Beauty and the Beast, you might as well just do Beauty and the Beast, you know? And I just started the Sinners duet, which is a serial killer romance and like it starts off so intense and then it just stays intense. I'm at 40% of there are no saints and like Cole, our main guy, is definitely a sociopath. Like he feels no feelings but he's this artist that's in a rivalry with another serial killer artist but that serial killer like brutalizes women and is like very flashy and he's like very detached but he sees Mara and like it starts to kindle something in him so I'm it's it's in, like it's insane there's so many trigger warnings for this please do your research before you start this book but like if you can handle it it's probably the darkest book that I've read yet oh my god but I'm loving it and I'm just gonna binge this little duet. So today I'm about to go to work and then I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna read. Hello, so I basically did not get to vlog all weekend because I was away at a wedding, but while I was away, I read the entirety of The Sinner's Duet, which is There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil. It was incredible. Like the things that Sophie was able to do with this book just shocked me and I'm like, wow. I guess I like serial killer romances now. It was crazy, definitely a lot of trigger warnings um, because it's about a serial killer, so please look them up and make sure that you're comfortable with the content before you decide to read the book. In the first one, there are no saints. We're following Mara, who is a broke, struggling artist, and then Cole, who is the serial killer, and he's famous, and he has this famous rivalry with Alastair Shaw, but the rivalry goes deeper than that because they're both serial killers. Um, However, Cole just kind of tends to kill like men that get in his way. He's never killed a woman and Alastair is like this brutal guy that like gets off on killing women and essentially I like I don't even want to give away too much of the plot but um all three of them kind of get like tangled up in this game and Cole who has never felt anything starts to develop this obsession with Mara 
and because of that like that's kind of like their their story of them their love story essentially it's like not normal it's like he's literally a sociopath and he only ever has feelings for her and it was like it got so intense and it was so interesting to see how we were kind of able to see how these two characters came together even though like Cole is literally literally a sociopath you're like still rooting for him and Mara and Mara is this girl that has really been like abused her whole life and she's a struggling artist and she doesn't like see a lot <laughs> she doesn't like really believe in her work or think that she's going to get anywhere and then like Cole kind of plucks her out from obscurity and helps her become a rising star in the art world and it's very interesting having like art as a backdrop for this series as well because it's very important their artwork is very important um in this series and like i just thought it was like so interesting and intricate and well done and just like i can't believe that i was rooting for the serial killer i can't believe it and then in the second book so in the second book mara really like comes into her own and like oh my god it just got so good like her character development was amazing like she in the first book it's kind of like this push and pull between Cole and Mara and like in the second book it's more about like them like kind of like Mara stepping into her own power and like taking back the power from the people that like abused her and like it was just a beautiful like redemption story although like very messed up because it's literally about a serial killer but it was just amazing like I just both books were five stars like I'm just sitting here and I'm like like wow like the things that were actually able to like be portrayed to the audience and you're like obviously looking at this couple from like a very fucked up lens because like they killed like he killed people but like it's just so intense and interesting and I loved it this is the end of what I had planned for my Sophie Lark taste test vlog. So I think what I'm going to do is I actually am going to end the vlog here and then I will continue to read Sophie's books in weekly reading vlog because that's something that I really want to bring back and I haven't been weekly reading vlog in forever. So I think I'm just going to bring it back because I miss having that content on my channel. I feel like it was a staple on my channel and I've fallen out of the habit. So anyways, to review what I have read in this uh, vlog we have Yvonne which is number one in the Underworld series and then I read Brutal Prince and Stolen Air which are the first two in the Brutal Birthright series and then I read her Sinner's Duet. I loved all of them. I can see why everyone on the internet is obsessed with this author because she's absolutely amazing and I'm so excited to read the rest of her books. However here I will mention the recommended reading order is actually a little bit different than what I read it as and so the sinner's duet is just completely separate you don't have to worry about that but all of her other series interconnect and the recommended reading order i'll show a picture here where sophie had on her story she's like this is actually the order that i recommend to people is to read the entirety of the brutal birthright series which is six books and that's set in chicago following the different mafia family families in chicago and then you read the first two kingmakers books because those follow the children of the people from that series and then you read the first two underworld books because that are those are the children that the next two king makers books focus on and then after that you can read the rest of the underworld series so if it wasn't for a taste test vlog i would have probably just read it that way but because i wanted to get the gamut of all the different series that she has that's what i did and now going forward i will continue with the brutal birthright series and i'm just like looking forward to reading more of them and i have a few other things <laughs> on my January TBR let me I have a lot to play around with in my January TBR and um I've been getting through books really fast this January it like surprises me the world is at my fingertips and I will curate my February TBR to continue on with what I am doing my ending recommendation is of course read Sophie Lark's books they're amazing like just do it if you want dark mafia romance or serial killer romance like just read them that is all I have to impart upon you. So I hope you enjoyed this taste test vlog. Let me know if you want to see like more vlogs from me or if you're excited for weekly reading vlogs, bringing those back because I need to do that and have some more reading books. I'll catch you guys in the next one.